So I read an article about 9,000 calories a day. That's got to be a lot. I play college football myself, and 5,000 was a lot for me. So what's the importance of you quadrupling up on calories? Why and how does this benefit you in this sport? Uh, well, for track and field, I eat pretty healthy. It's uh, uh, pretty small portions, and you know, it's uh, I've, I'm usually the same weight uh, for the track season. I stay pretty constant, like 133, 135. Um, for bobsled, because weight actually is one of the things that helps or hurt a uh, performance, um, I had to gain weight because my track weight was too light. Uh, in a bobsled race, at the end of a race, they they put the bobsled on a scale with the two athletes in it and weigh it. And if it's too, if the weight is too, is too much, you're disqualified, disqualified from the race. And if it's under it, it, it would hurt your performance because mass pushes mass. And as, as you go down the track, velocity increases with the weight. So uh, weight actually gives you an advantage in some instances. And so I had to put on this weight so that I wouldn't be putting my driver at a disadvantage for the race. All right. We know that you are one of the more outspoken celebrity athletes on social media talk about how social media has helped your brand and how you teamed up with twin labs to make your social media deal work um well i mean social media was uh just a way for me to kind of interact with my fans um it's it's you know they have access to my phone because my my twitter app is like right there on my phone so they can just at reply me instead of you know try to get a hold of my agent or my coach it's it's right there and so that's the easiest way for them probably to reach out um i don't know actually know how like twin labs uh approached me after the 08 olympics they were the only sponsor that i picked up after i hit the hurdle and they said that they were just really encouraged by how i handled myself under uh defeat and you know they thought that would be a good role model for them and, and at the time i didn't know much about supplements i mean i had supplements but i didn't know that like they could play such a huge role in your victory and also in the fact of helping keep you uh, like clean because a lot of athletes right now, especially in track and field, are testing positive uh, by these supplements that are not um, – they're getting cross-contaminated in factories. And, and Twin Labs has this clean series where they make sure that their supplements are exactly what's in the supplements. And a, a person training a, for the Olympics, a high school athlete, a college athlete, all who are – uh, have drug tests, random drug tests, um, obligations won't be, you know, in that kind of crossfire. And I've seen bobsledders and track athletes have their career taken away because they are taking supplements from just a regular store. And there was something in there. They didn't know. They, they assumed that what was on the label was just in the labor label. They didn't realize that it would be cross contaminated when it goes in factory. So you are about helping others and helping foundations. Talk about your foundation, um, Hurdlers for Hope Foundation. Um, yeah, I started the Hurdles for Hope a Foundation to help kids who have uh, parents that are incarcerated. Um, I grew up with my mom. She's a single mom because my dad was in and out of jail, and she was trying to support five kids, and so that was a lot to handle. I remember at Christmas time, we would that would be like one of the hardest holidays for her, trying to get presents for all the kids, so we We'd always have these programs that would help out, help us out, and we'd get free gifts, you know, and we'd wait till Christmas to open them. So I knew that there were other kids that were probably in the same kind of environment growing up, and I just wanted to give them inspiration that, you know, things can change, and, you know, I'm going to try my best to help them out in any way I can. So um, just on the beginning stages of that and, and looking forward to do more with that. But there's definitely uh, happy that I'm in this position that I can be able to, to kind of help out those in that position. All right, so for my last thing, I want to do like a rapid round table with you. I'll ask you a few questions, and you just answer to the best of, of however your abilities are, all right? Okay. First question, east east or west? <laughs> uh, I, can I say the south? Gosh, why did I have to use that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're from the north, and I know you went to school in the south, so I just said, hey, east or west. <laughs> all right, chicken or steak? Steak. Ooh, summer or winter? Uh, probably summer. All right. Um, ball game or movie theaters? Ball games or movies? I'll do ball game. All right, cool. I hear Hollywood is also knocking on your door. Talk about that. Oh, the only the only one I did was uh, I did a quick cameo in uh, the Left Behind movie that's coming out next year. It's starring Nicolas Cage. 
Um, so my, my role is very small. So like I have eight words and honestly, I'm just hoping that it doesn't get edited out of the film. <laughs> Are there any, any celebrities that you would like to work with? Oh, oh I'd say De Nicholas Cage. Like I had no clue I'd be able to work with him at any moment in my life. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think who would be like the next on the list. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio would be kind of cool. So, but he doesn't really do action movies, and I feel like I would want I'd be more comfortable in an action movie. I don't, you know, Leonardo would probably be like he's amazing, so he'd probably uh, not like my acting skills. <laughs> okay, so when it's all over, when your career is all over, no more track, no more Bob study. What's next for Lola? After the whole career, oh, I don't know. <laughs> probably just you know regular life. Have some kids and, and, you know, enjoy being in, in my own house for more than two weeks. All right. Lolo Jones at Lolo Jones on Twitter. You can catch me at Marcus E. Sullivan on Twitter.